So AI is exactly where it should be right now to achieve human level intelligence by 2029. So that's something I predicted 24 years ago in my book, The Age of Spiritual Machines. So once AI reaches human level capability, it will at the same time soar past us in every way. I mean, already logical event models can talk about anything. No, no human being can do that. We aren't going to be left behind. We're going to merge with the technology that we're creating and move forward into the future together. So when I made that prediction 24 years ago, Stanford University was so alarmed by my prediction, they organized an international conference to assess it. So AI experts came from around the world. And actually 80% of them agreed that a computer would match human performance eventually, but they thought it would take a hundred years. And we've actually done this poll now every year. It kind of stayed at a hundred years. I stayed at 2029, which was started out of 30 years. Um, but AI since then, particularly recently has advanced exponentially. And the consensus has fallen in line with my original prediction. So the last poll showed that AI experts now think it's gonna happen by 2029, basically matching my original prediction, which I've maintained since 1999. So this is my uh, graph of the, the most powerful computers in the world. Uh, it's reached this turning point because of the exponential growth of computation. And I started tracking this trend 40 years ago. So, so take a look at this chart. It plots the price performance of computation since 1939. And as you go up the chart, it's exponential. Each level on this chart is 10 times greater than the chart below it. But it's, So a straight line represents exponential growth. But look at how predictable this is. I started uh, analyzing this 40 years ago. It's a smooth trend with no interruptions, despite major world events like World War II or economic depressions. You don't see any example of that on this graph. So the first point here, 1939, it was actually the first programmable computer called the Zeusa II, created in 1939. It performed 0. 0.000007 calculations per second per dollar. So Zeus was a German, he apparently was not a fan of Hitler, but the computer was shown to Hitler and Hitler and the Nazi party saw no military value to computation, a very big mistake for them. Because the third computer on this chart is the Colossus created by Alan Turing and his colleagues. So Winston Churchill immediately saw the value of this. He got very much behind Turing, actually protected him and the Colossus computer. Uh, he felt this computer would be key to winning World War II, which it was. The British got totally behind it, and they used it to completely decode Nazi messages. So everything that Hitler wrote or read was also read by Churchill. So even though Nazi air power was actually several times uh, that of England, uh, England used the Colossus to win the Battle of Britain and provide the Allies with a launching pad for its D-Day invasion. And you could really say this computer uh, saved England and Europe. So there are many stories behind this chart. It almost looks like someone's behind this. They, they saw the chart and they saw where it should be the next time. But for the first 40 years, nobody even knew that this existed. It just went at an exponential trend. And this is actually true of everything. So no one was even aware of this trend as, until, as I said, I presented it 40 years ago. Uh, and I predicted it out and it's actually gone very much on this continued exponential trend. It's gone from telephone relays to vacuum tubes, to transistors, to integrated circuits. Now people have called this Moore's law. That's really not correct because Moore's law has to do with integrated circuits. It started actually decades before Intel was even formed. Of the 80 best computers in terms of computations per second per dollar, only 10 of them have anything to do with Intel. 
The chart goes up on the upper right-hand corner to the Google Cloud TPU V4, which for the same amount of money, instead of 0.00007 calculations a second in 1939, it's now 50 billion calculations per second per dollar. So that's quite, quite uh, an advance, all with constant dollars in the past 80 years. And if we look more closely at the past 13 years, the amount of computation devoted to training the best AI models has on average doubled more than twice a year. That's a 10 billion fold increase just since 2010. So, I mean, a year ago, it was not uh, strong enough to do large language model. Now, a year later, uh, that's taking over AI. Uh, it, after 80 years of exponential growth, computational power has finally reached a tipping point. And it's allowing AI to do pretty amazing things like large language models. Uh, that's why LLMs have emerged this past year and not the year before. So one of the most profound near-term implications of the exponential growth of technology is the vast acceleration of progress in creating new medications for diseases. That's actually, I think, the most exciting opportunity. Uh, and let me give you an example. Nearly all functions of the body are carried out by proteins. Uh, they are the building blocks of life. Uh, the unique individual shapes dictate the success or failure of all medicine. So for 50 years, scientists were aware of this. Uh, we actually produce a one-dimensional sequence of amino acids and finally, at a certain point, that, that linear sequence of amino acids folds up into a three-dimensional protein. It's called the protein folding problem. And people have actually studied this. A small number of researchers were able to do this. They weren't very successful getting maybe 20% of them correct. So in 2022, AlphaFold2, it's an artificial intelligence model created by Alphabet's DeepMind, shattered all expectations by predicting the structures of basically all known proteins, not just in humans, but in all of nature. And this marked a profound step forward in medicine because it unlocked information that we need to synthetically produce proteins with the desired function. Uh, for example, proteins that will stimulate our immune system to fight cancer. Uh, and we're actually seeing that now, and this was not possible even five years ago. Uh, that was Hasabas, who headed up this work at uh, uh, Google DeepMind, has launched a new lab that's going to uh, perfect this. Um, to using AI, they're processing and modeling vast amounts of genetic data to pinpoint medical solutions in one thousandth the time it, it used to take traditional methods. For example, many of you have probably taken the Moderna COVID vaccine. Uh, that was actually created in two days. Uh, we actually wrote down all the different things that might uh, inhibit COVID vaccine. It was actually several billion different uh, possible things. We actually test, the, the way it used to work is we would test one thing, it would take a year, then we might modify it and take it in another few years. And if you're lucky over 10 years, maybe you'd get a medication. They tried all several billion and that took two days. And at the end of that, they had the, the ideal thing. And that is what we've been using for years. Uh, it then took them 10 months to test it on humans. Uh, we can actually do away with that. We're going to test it on simulated humans or can actually test it on millions of humans uh, in a few days as well. Uh, but it was the exact sequence that they had found using AI in just two days.